Well, smoking is just one of the causes of health problems in Asia. Throughout the region, the number of smog-related illnesses has reached staggering levels. It's International Earth Day today, and experts are warning of the damage that pollution can do. Christian Marseille, chairman for the Hong Kong-based campaign group Clear the Air, joins us now in studio. Mr. Marseille, thank you for coming in. My pleasure. Now, your main field of research is, uh, is Hong Kong, so let's discuss that first. What are the main causes of air pollution there? It is estimated that roughly 44% of air pollution is caused by vehicle emissions, 30% by power plants, and 20% from various sources. But reports suggest that, uh, that ships have also got quite a lot to do with it, and the government in Hong Kong is uh, reportedly covering it up. What's your opinion on that? Well, it is estimated that the ships normally would be responsible for only 30% of emissions. Now, due to the very nature of the shipping industry, which is global, the question of pollution has to be tackled globally since the ship called different countries. And um, we know that the um, Institute of um, Maritime Organization is actually doing its best to tackle the problem with the government. And, uh about the, uh, I mean, the smog levels in Hong Kong, what sort of um, health effects do they have on the people there? Yes, um, the smog level actually induces long-term respiratory disease and it mostly affects young children, people with poor health and the elderly. It also costs a lot of money to the community and this is this last point that has to be stressed. It is estimated that it would cost roughly Hong Kong $2 billion. A year? A year. Oh my gosh, that is a lot. And how do the smog levels in Hong Kong compare to other um, Asian countries? Again, this is something that needs um, further studies since it is very difficult to compare the measure of pollution from cities to cities. Different cities incorporate different components and it is difficult, for instance, to position Hong Kong within the region and even within American cities or, or anywhere else in the world. So there needs to be um, an international standard to compare effectively. Now, uh, smoking is also a big problem, isn't it, as we just saw on air pollution. Um, some countries have introduced a law making it illegal to smoke in public places. What do you think the chances are of getting something like that implemented in Asia, where the proportion of smokers is just so high? Yes. Actually, Clear the Air is working actively on what we call smoke-free dining. Smoke-free dining consists in actually having measures implemented to prevent smoking in the restaurant, not only for the sake of the diners, but also for the catering people, for the catering staff. Now, we know in Hong Kong that 15% of uh, Hong Kong people only smoke. That means 85% of Hong Kong people do not smoke. So we are very confident that a step will be taken in the right direction on this matter. Well, as Asia develops and industrializes so rapidly, um, how likely is it that you know these huge pollution levels can in fact be controlled to some extent? Then if you talk about Asia and uh, each country has its own sources and its own, its own issues to deal with, now it definitely requires coordination between the various governments and not only between the various governments but also with local groups that can play a very productive role and a very supportive role with the government to solve issues in different countries. Mr. Massey, thank you for coming in and I wish you a very happy Earth Day. Thank you. That was Christian Massey of Clear the Air.